Welcome to the Spirit of Mayflower podcast. Twenty twenty is a very special year for the Midlands, as it celebrates four hundred years since the Separatists left the region aboard the famous ship the Mayflower, seeking religious freedom and a new life in a new world, America. Join me, Rachel Carter, recounting the story of my recent Atlantic crossing on board a thousand foot cargo ship, and Wynne and Ella Pritchard of Highcliffe Music, who you all hear throughout the podcast episode playing the parts of pilgrims William Bradford and Mary Brewster. You'll be transported over the Atlantic and hear my experiences, a sculptor based in the Midlands, and my diary written during my time aboard a modern-day cargo ship, and Mary Brewster, wife of William Brewster, one of only 19 women who made the perilous journey. The stories of two pilgrim women separated by 400 years are supported on their journeys by stories from fellow pilgrim William Bradford, voiced by Wynne Pritchard. You are invited to share the Mayflower experience of these women on two very contrasting journeys of a lifetime. Thursday, 1st of August. Last night I had a cunning plan to strip both bunks and use all the blankets on my bunk. I have now made a comfortable pad consisting of two mattress protectors and a woolen blanket under my bed sheet. The bed is still rock hard but it's much more comfortable. I slept well even with the turning back of the clock. We began to encounter rougher seas in the middle of the night and it's still rough this morning. The boat is moving around a lot more than usual with the swells, but it feels like a slow motion movement, rather than the up and down in smaller boats. It was fun showering this morning with the rolling action of the boat. Luckily there are handles in the shower for just such an occasion. Breakfast. The usual two squares of toast with cucumber and tomato. Juice and coffee. Funny trying to walk with coffee in your hand on a rocking ship. You must try a walk later if it stops raining. Doncaster John says we are currently going past Iceland, then as we approach Newfoundland we will head southwest. Lots of table talk about weather, other boat trips, storms, lost cargo and the like. Oh, and a Grimaldi ship that sunk a little while ago. Wonderful! Where's that life jacket and cold suit? Made some good macrame pieces today, in spite of the constant rolling. The sea is very different from the last day, a few days. Now a thick mist has set in. Lunchtime was fun, eating and drinking while the ship rocked from side to side, with zero visibility outside. A few missing from the table with seasickness. Lunch was a side salad lentil soup and surprise surprise potatoes and mixed veg. The rest had spaghetti, chicken and potatoes with a tiny amount of veg. Wondering why I didn't have spaghetti as an option but perhaps it was an egg pasta. All washed down with a small Italian beer. Lovely. I found out that once the ship is put at sea You tick a clipboard to select your two rations of alcohol per day. The options were red wine, white wine or beer. One to be served with each meal, but for guests only. The ship is dry for the sailors and they ask we consume the drinks with our meals. I've not really felt the effects of the movement like some others have. Maybe the beer helps. Ivan checked the map. We're still going past Iceland towards Greenland. We could be changing course soon and then we'll be heading right into the wind. My curtains are constantly moving and one of my drawers is opening and closing. Must go and lock it. I've discovered that my music library on my phone works without Wi-Fi. 
unfortunately, I only downloaded three albums. So I've been working to the same three albums on rotation. PJ Harvey's Rid of Me, Beastie Boys' Ill Communication, and Prophets of Rage by Prophets of Rage. I completed some more macrame, then ventured outside for an afternoon walk on deck. I watched the afternoon weather balloon being filled and released. Sat with a cup of tea and some ginger nut biscuits. Time for some reading before a dinner of I expect more potatoes. I was wrong. Dinner was rice, grilled aubergine and ratatouille, followed by fruit and beer. I've never had so much beer. No plot change tonight, so I'm hoping for a good night's sleep and good weather tomorrow. I nodded off about 8.30 and struggling with the hour changes. At home it would be 10.30, so I walked to the mess for a cuppa. John and Mary were having their evening cuppa too. They asked if I was okay as I was quiet at dinner. I explained I was just ready for a good night's sleep. Friday the 2nd of August. I don't know if it was because I was extra tired or if it was the rocking motion of the ship, but I slept pretty well from 10pm till 6am. The weather and conditions outside are the worst yet, and the boat is really moving around. The containers outside creak and groan with the movement every now and again. I ate some mixed seeds, nuts and dried fruit that I brought with me to keep me going until breakfast at eight. Breakfast was the usual. I tried to spice things up a little and had apricot jam on one slice and strawberry on the other. The rest of the table have toast, cheese, salami and butter, followed by two eggs and bacon. I'm quite liking having tomato and cucumber for breakfast. Ivan checked the maps on the bridge before breakfast. We have passed Iceland now and by the end of the day or tomorrow morning we should be going past the southern tip of Greenland. We think we are approximately halfway. The captain said we are going a full knot slower than yesterday because of the weather conditions. He thinks tomorrow should improve and we could see the sun once again. I do hope so. The view outside is just white mist. I can't see anything past the immediate vicinity of the ship. On my stroll outside yesterday, I saw a small bird flying alongside us, just above the water. I had my morning walk on deck, and within 30 seconds my shoes and feet were wet through. There is such a lot of water on the deck, which moves with the boat. It's like having a tidal flow of water on the deck that moves too quickly for you to avoid. The wind was so strong and I had to take cover and find a windbreak. After five minutes of very fresh air, I thought it best to head inside rather than risk trying to go up to the top deck. Working at my desk on a new macrame, please. It looks a little like a lotus flower. I've added some leaves and now I'm stuck. So I'm going to put it to one side. Time to fetch a new bottle of water. Still stuck. Best leave it alone and return to it later. Sat on the bed to read and fell asleep for an hour. And now it's lunchtime. Lunch was delicious. Veg broth, followed by a grated carrot and apple salad. I think seasoned with nutmeg or cinnamon. Main course was ratatouille and potatoes, washed down with a cold beer. We have planned a movie night for this evening. John has sourced some crisps from the cadets and I've offered ginger biscuits. Movie, 7pm. Emergency drill at 3.20pm. Just heard a passenger being sick. Reading Philbrick, he is quoting Bradford's dislike of a sailor who took great delight in mocking the sufferings of their charges. Would always be contemning the poor people in their sickness, and cursing them daily with grievous execrations. This afternoon, Ivan and I headed to the bridge. The view is amazing, as it spans the entire width of the centre of the ship, with windows on three sides. The movement of the ship is so easy to view from the bridge, 
I didn't realise just how much it is moving. Apparently, one of the cadets is suffering from seasickness and is embarrassed about it. The captain is really friendly and let us stay for as long as we like. Afterwards, we headed to the conference room, a little room we can use to make drinks and watch movies. Mary and John had laid out a jigsaw puzzle, so I stayed a while to do some with other travellers, Iban, Cesar and Ivan. And after Iban and Ivan had left, Cesar and I were joined by John and Mary. Dinner was fried potatoes and veg. A little greasy, but okay. A bit of seasoning, a little dash of soy sauce, and it tasted fine. Had a beer and then a peach. The Filipino crew were watching a film and playing ping pong. Captain announced another clock change tonight. Back one hour at 2200s. Movie night was great fun. We all got together in the conference room to watch a movie. The Queen film, Bohemian Rhapsody. Everyone had saved a a drink from dinner and we shared ginger nuts and German waffles. Afterwards, we completed a little more jigsaw and chatted. It made you completely forget that the room was moving around. It's 10.30pm, so now only 9.30pm. I need to stay up longer so I've got a chance at staying asleep until at least six. I'll do a Sudoku puzzle and try and keep my brain active for a little longer. Saturday the 3rd of August. Last night got very rough just before I went to sleep. However, I did sleep very well until half past six and then dozed a little until about seven o'clock. No visibility outside, just a thick white mist. I can't see the sea, but from the feel of it, conditions feel better. Breakfast of two squares of toast, then off to walk the decks. The port side deck is very calm this morning, and the wind seems to be on the starboard side. I managed three laps from port to starboard, up to the top deck, and back down to port. Went into the conference room and spent a little time with John and Mary and Ivan doing some jigsaw puzzle. I've unpicked a little of the lotus flower macrame piece from yesterday and reworked the leaves. I'm much happier with it. I worked until lunchtime, had a quick walk outside, then off to the mess. Lunch was rice with white cabbage and carrots and a side of pickled red cabbage. I've never eaten so much cabbage. There was pudding today, thick wedges of honeydew melon. John asked the kitchen if they had fresh ginger, and they had, so we had little pieces of fresh ginger with the melon. Delicious. All washed down with a beer and then a coffee. We discussed the possible repeat of last night's successful movie night, which we all thoroughly enjoyed. Outside is still white with mist, but the sun is shining. On the top deck, it's very sunny, and you can see the mist isn't very thick. It's on the surface of the water, maybe just taller than the ship. Every now and again there's a clear patch. You can see the horizon and then it's gone again as you travel through the next patch. Sometimes it's difficult to see the end of the boat and feels like we're not moving at all. Ivan showed Cesar and I the satellite image of the route. We have started heading southwest now towards Newfoundland. Let's hope the fog disperses and we see some sea life. I've decided to wash some clothes today, as I'm running low on clean ones. There's a washing machine and tumble dryer for the passengers to use. Hardly any of my clothes labels say they can be tumble dried. Never a problem at home as I use a washing line. Having carried on board with me a few bundles of 3mm macrame cord, I've rigged up a washing line in my room. And as I've no pegs, I've threaded the cord through the armholes of the dresses, which works very well. I've reserved my total sum of four coat hangers for hanging cardigans and leggings. I'm quite impressed. They even move about as if they were in a breeze, but that's just the ship moving. Read that after landing at Provincetown Harbour on Saturday the 11th of November, The pilgrims had been at sea for 
two months. They stayed aboard Sunday for prayers, and that first Monday... Our people went on shore to refresh themselves, and our women to wash, as they had great need. For generations to come, Monday would be wash day in New England. Went out at 4pm. The mist has finally gone, and for the first time in days we have good conditions. The wind is still strong, but there is no rain, no mist or fog, and the sun is shining. I should have rigged up the washing line on deck. My clothes would be dry in no time at all. But I don't suppose the captain would take too kindly to me turning the top deck into a laundry area. Nearly time for dinner. Please, no more cabbage. Reading that the Mayflower remains anchored in the Cape Cod Bay, whilst a party of men take a small vessel on one of three exploratory expeditions between November the 15th and December the 12th. They describe Cape Cod Bay. A good harbour and pleasant bay, circled round, except in the entrance which is about four miles over from land to land, compassed about to the very sea with oaks, pines, juniper, sassafras and other sweet wood. It is a harbour wherein a thousand sail of ships may safely ride. It was on this day that the passengers assembled to sign what is known as the Mayflower Compact, signed by 41 men. Dinner was not great today. No amount of condiments made it any better. It was chunks of aubergine, tomato and courgette, all of which which were so overcooked they turned into watery, squishy lumps. Even the potatoes, which are usually really nice, were not great. Oh well, I'll have to raid my snack supplies. Everyone has been given such different information prior to boarding regarding what you can and cannot bring on board. No alcohol, no food. I did add a few cereal bars, a packet of ginger biscuits in case of seasickness, some dried mixed fruit and nuts and a bag of mixed seeds in case I was needing protein. Oh, and a box of peppermint tea bags. At various stages of the journey, I've needed all of them, so I'm glad that I packed them. I will have to ask around what customs is due to be like in case I need to eat everything before we disembark on Monday. Movie night is off. The cadets have taken over the conference room and are watching a film of their own. We can't use the mess after dinner as that is for the crew only, so movie night cancelled. Instead I took a walk around the deck. The sun is low and shining across the sea and the sky is so clear, but boy is it cold and windy. I dropped off my rain mac and visited the bridge instead. I knocked on the door and they said yes to a visit. The views are amazing, almost a 360 degree view and all of it blue sky and sea, nothing else. We may see land tomorrow. So exciting to see terra firma once more. It's been four days since I've seen land. The pilgrims had over 60 days at sea. They reported. It caused us to rejoice together and praise God that had given us once again to see the land. I'm hoping once again to see some sea life when we get closer to Newfoundland. Fingers crossed for a whale or a dolphin. Whilst on the bridge, I took a little movie clip of the horizon moving up and down through the port side window. The rolling is the calmest it's been for days, but the containers are still groaning outside my window. It's the final clock change at 2200 hours. Back one more hour to be on East Coast Canadian time. We are now due to arrive Monday tea time. I wonder if they will feed us before sending us on our way. Maybe not. Best save some snacks just in case. Just before bedtime, Ivan offered to take a picture of me in the sunset. It was so windy standing at the bow of the ship, but the sky was beautiful first sunset since leaving Liverpool. Sunday the 4th of August. Whales! I saw a whale! 
Well, I say whale. I actually saw the water spout and a tiny bit of its back. But nonetheless, it was a whale. The pilgrims noted. Every day we saw whales playing hard by us, of which in that place, if we had the instruments and means to take them, we might have made a very rich return, which to our great grief we wanted. Our master and his mate, and others experienced in fishing, professed we might have made three or four thousand pounds worth of oil. Some of us had remained at the breakfast table chatting. John and Mary, Ivan and I were seated. Sandy and Karsten were stood at the window. Benny shouted, Whale! I see a whale! We all dashed to the window to see a water spout just by the port side. Everyone dashed off to their rooms for coats and headed straight outside. By the time we got out, they were too far away to capture on camera, but we did see another two water spouts go up before they swam away. It's really made my day. We finally have calm seas, blue sky and now whales swimming past. The wind is still very strong, so you can't go out without a rain mac or your hair tied up or else it gets so full of lumps. I'm feeling very tired today. I fell asleep at half past nine until about six. Luckily, I'd changed my clock before bed, so it was really half past ten. I've really found my sea legs and feel lucky that I wasn't affected by the rough seas in the week, like so many other passengers and crew alike. Apparently, when we get to Halifax, the ship has to travel under a bridge that almost skims the mast of the boat. I've been told we should arrive around 2pm, but we'll need to wait for a pilot to guide us into port for about half past five. If we don't leave the ship until after half five, it may take me a while to get to the condo, then it could be too late to call home. That is, of course, if they have free Wi-Fi. Maybe I should go straight to a cafe with internet and try and contact home first. I hope they don't worry. Originally we had an arrival time of 8am, but the rougher weather has delayed us a little. Almost lunchtime. Made some macrame bookmarks for my fellow passengers. I hope they like them. Ivan popped in to show me last night's picture. The sky looks amazing. Then we had to try and figure out how to get his laptop and my phone to talk to one another without internet. After a while, we managed it. Please, no more cabbage. I don't think my insides can handle much more. Time to go. Lunch was cheeseless pizza with mushrooms and peppers. Very tasty. I gave out the macrame bookmarks and some postcards. Sandy thanked me with a big hug, which was really nice. The captain came to the table and has offered us a tour of the engine rooms at 3pm, meeting point, the bridge. I went on deck after lunch, to the top deck to read in the sunshine. I sat with Karsten and Sandy by the windbreak. We spotted another whale, and we all rushed to the end of the deck. I saw the water spout far away. It would be fantastic to see one a little closer, but I suppose they keep out the way of these massive ships. I've taken down my washing line and done a little packing. Can't wait to see land and contact home. The captain's tour was very interesting. He took us down floor by floor and showed us all the cargo inside the ship. It was amazing. Opened a small door and inside a fleet of Land Rovers as far as you could see. Another door on the next floor. Tractors and army vehicles. Another door road repair vehicles, rock crushing machines, cranes and lorries, another floor full of boats and not little ones either, yachts. We saw Sandy and Karsten's van, well more of a monster camper truck with huge wheels, then we saw Ivan's camper van which he was very pleased to see. More cargo, huge crates, some from Bombardier, some from Rolls Royce, names from home. We wound our way through the ship It made you realise that the stacks of shipping containers that you see outside are tiny compared to the cargo inside the ship. Then we went into a new area 
after walking down some very long corridors, the engine control room. Lots of dials, switches and screens. Then the captain handed us all tiny little packets, earplugs. We went down some very narrow and steep steps into a very hot room that was so noisy, the engine room. I almost expected to see rows of furnaces with dusty men shoveling coal and giant pistons moving up and down. In reality, it was all shiny stainless steel and cables and vast tubes, very big. I asked the captain what was the strangest cargo he's transported, and he explained a fleet of private jets for an exhibition in Texas, so people could pick the colour they liked. Then the planes were all shipped back again. After the hot tour, I walked the decks for some fresh air and looked at the containers in a different light. This thousand foot ship really carries some interesting stuff. Atlantic Sea is approximately 10 times longer than the Mayflower, who measured around 100 foot in length, comparable to the length of two buses and capable of accommodating 180 casks of wine. Before dinner, I made a special piece of macrame for Mary. Showing her my work in the week, she was really taken by the chevron pattern with the berry knot, so I thought it would be nice to make her one. They are a lovely couple who have really looked after me. Whilst I wove, we were entertained by the sounds of the Filipino crew singing karaoke during their afternoon off. Mary loved her macrame piece. Dinner was rice, and veg, and you've guessed it, cabbage. But I had a lovely surprise. The cook had made, just for me, two vegan cupcakes. Delicious! I was going to save one for tomorrow, but this was the first cake in over a week, so I ate them both. Thank you, cook. Movie night again. We watched Clint Eastwood's The Mule, a very good film. Afterwards, had a quick stroll on deck, and then headed off to bed. We should see land tomorrow. Reading before bed that the pilgrims look to replenish their supplies whilst at anchor in the area now known as Provincetown. There was the greatest store of fowl that we ever saw. For cod we are said, but found none. There was a good store, no doubt, in their season. Neither got we any fish all the time we lay there but some few little ones on the shore. We found great mussels, and very fat and full of sea pearl, but we could not eat them, for they made us all sick that did eat, as well sailors as passengers. They caused to cast and scour. Monday the 5th of August. I woke this morning to a beautiful sunrise, not a cloud in the sky. Had an early shower and dressed to head out before breakfast to see what I could see. The port side deck was awash with water. It must have rained heavily in the night. There's a strong wind, but it has a touch of warmth to it, unlike the cold winds of last week. Spotted land off the starboard side. So faint at first that I thought it could be a cloud on the horizon, but after 20 minutes it was still there. I thought it was Newfoundland, but it's actually North Nova Scotia. The first sighting of land. Hooray! Breakfast, our last one on board ship. Had my last square of bread with cucumber and tomatoes. Everyone seems so happy to see land again and excited for the next part of their journeys. Sandy and Karsten are travelling around Canada for the entire summer, then to America for winter in their truck. Ivan is travelling for a few years in his camper van taking photographs. The Italian father and son are holidaying in Canada and then flying home. John and Mary are staying with the ship. It will be quarter past one in the afternoon at home. I hope they are not too worried that they have not heard from me yet. It may be evening before I get to the condo, in which case it may be too late to call home. I will have to message first thing Tuesday morning, which would be roughly Tuesday lunchtime in the UK. Off to look for whales. 1.30 p.m. The coast of Nova Scotia is more clearly visible now along the starboard side. 
we are in Canada. Spent the afternoon watching the views, the harbour, downtown Halifax and the ports. We travelled under two bridges that seemed very close to the top of the ship. So close, we could talk to the men working on the bridge. 5.30pm. We are sat in the harbour waiting for our turn to enter the port. Time for one last meal on board the ship Atlantic Sea. 8.50pm Canadian time. 12.50am UK time. Departing the ship was quite sad. We have all grown very close in such a short space of time. Cesar gave me a big hug and thanked me for my friendship. And his son spoke to me for the first time. I've arranged with the Germans and Ivan to meet up tomorrow evening if they are still in the area. We were all interviewed one by one by the immigration people who were very nice. I was asked to leave behind my seeds as they are not allowed in the country. I had a few quiet tears on my own. I've missed my window to call home. I do hope they are not worried. After leaving the ship, we were taken down to the docks two at a time. I travelled with Ivan down the elevators and into the bowels of the ship once more, where they were driving off tractors and other heavy machinery. On the dockside, a car took us to the port gates and I realised I was on terra firma once more. They fell upon their knees and blessed God of heaven who had brought them over the vast and furious ocean and delivered them from all the peril and miseries thereof again to set their feet on the firm and stable earth, their proper element. Now we hear again from Highcliffe Music. Following on from the reading of Mary Brewster's first letter from the Mayflower to her daughter Patience in episode one of the Spirit of Mayflower podcast, This first song sets the scene for the story by describing the ship and introducing Captain Jones, the passengers and crew. It is sung unaccompanied in a sea shanty style, so here is Away Away, written and performed by Wynne and Ella Pritchard. It's 1621 fine day The Mayflower lies in Plymouth Bay We're waiting for someone to say That we can sail away The Mayflower, she is small but strong At 90 feet, not big, not long And very soon we will be gone Be gone and on our way Away, 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 away We'll very soon be on our way To find that new world far away Away, away, away Away, 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 away Yes, very soon we'll leave this bay And it will be a glorious day Away, away, away Captain Jones, there is a man so very tough and very firm. It is a tight ship he do run, no one gets in his way. Each one will have to play their part, there'll be no questions from the start. If we are not to fall apart out there beyond the bay. Away, 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 away We'll very soon be on our way To find that new world far away Away, away, away Away, 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 away Yes, very soon we'll leave this bay And it will be a glorious day Away, away, away The crew, they are a motley lot True men of good will they are not They'd sooner let you die and rot Than share their food and ale Those thirty men, not bold or brave Would think you no more than a slave And wish for you an early grave Out in a stormy gale 
Away, 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 we'll very soon be on our way to find that new world far away, 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 away. Away, 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 yes, very soon we'll leave this bay, and it will be a glorious day. Away, away, away. The passengers number a hundred and two, on a ship built only for cargo and crew. There's nothing much that we can do but eat and sleep as one. Of children there are thirty-four, they sleep with others on the floor. And very soon there'll be one more before our journey's done. Away, 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 we'll very soon be on our way To find that new world far away, 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 away Away, 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 yes, very soon we'll leave this bay And it will be a glorious day, away, away, away Raise the anchor, lower the mainsail Today we leave for the new world. Away, 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 away. Today at last we're on our way to find that new world far away. Away, away, away. Away, 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 away. The time has come to leave this bay and it is now a glorious day. Away, away, away. Thank you for listening and don't forget to tune in for the next episode Exploring Canada.